Your girlfriend has no f-ing control over anything because you have shown your children they don't have to respect her. Yep. Bro, I'm gonna be honest, you're the main common denominator in all this. You are really failing your children and you're failing your girlfriend. Is that a thing for women? Like, is that a normal thing for you guys to bully each other like that? Because with men, Mm -hmm. it goes to a certain extent and then physical violence happens. Almost daily, one of the kids tell me, mommy, I'm so happy. Yeah, because you're there, you're present. Like hearing that shit, dude, babe, daddy. (laughs) (sighs) Homie, buddy, dude. When their father gets home from work, things gradually get worse. As soon as he comes in, the kids bombard him, which is sometimes sweet, but sometimes terrible. His son will follow him everywhere. He doesn't even have time. He doesn't even have enough time to wash his hands or sit down before he is asking if they can go outside or start complaining because one of the girls has remote, has the remote, the TV, and he wants it, etc. And we are back. We're back. Episode 36. 36. We're in the same clothes that we wore in episode 35 because we just recorded that shit Mm. and split it. We did. It became longer than we thought it would be. I talked a lot. We we talked a lot. That was that was a fun experience. It felt like the original podcast. It felt productive. Yep. So you guys are going to get the second half of the email that we recorded last or that step aired last week. We gave you the women's side. This week is going to be the men's side and some some shenanigans. Mm. Um, I don't know the total length of the emails, the way that they worked out, because we were more in depth on hers than his. So this could be a short episode, but I haven't put it in the computer and edited. So I don't know. We just wanted to give you guys an intro before throwing the, the podcast to you. Right. So if this is a 30 minute episode, I apologize. Continuation. But it is a continuation. And we may start doing things like this in the future because we would like to bring our, our times down from three hours to like an hour and a half to two hours. So... Enjoy the episode, guys. Let us know what you think. Wait, the five-year-old wants to remote to the TV? The kids don't dictate what we watch in this household. No, no, they don't. We have... Why, why, wait a minute. Hold on a minute now. This is a whole other conversation. Right. Why are your kids addicted to electronics to that, ex- to that extent? Is it five, yeah. five to eight years old, they shouldn't be addicted to television. They should be wanting to go outside and play and like color and learn. Right. That, that's a problem. I'm working on sign language with the kids. Right. Like, I'm just going to continue touching on our our children don't control what we watch in this household. We've been watching poker the last few days. Mm -hmm. If you want to sit in the living room, you're watching poker with us. Yep. Or you can go in your bedroom and play in the fort that I built for you. And you can go outside and play in the yard that we have for you. Right. We have movie nights. Right. And the kids are always, I want to watch Elsa. I want to watch Elsa. Let's watch Cars. No, we're not watching that tonight. Why not? Because we don't want to watch that. We're going to watch a movie as a family. Right. And then we can pick out a movie. And nine times out of ten, I end up picking it up because you're not, you don't care. You're not going to watch the movie. And the kids don't know what they want to watch. They want to watch the same shit on repeat. Right. Because it's a comfort for them. Right. You've never seen Princess and the Frog. Let's watch Princess and the Frog. We also regulate the kids' TV. We do. Heavily, heavily yes. regulate the kids' TV. They have no access to YouTube. Zero access to YouTube. Um, they have a Netflix account that is restricted to TVY. It's restricted to a lot though, because we've gone in and removed a lot of shows that we don't want them watching. Yes, I've entered in actual titles that right. are removed. Yeah, I, I like that they watch Bluey. Like there are certain shows that they watch. Like if, when they remember the number block shows. Yeah, they still watch. Them. I enjoy them watching shit like that. Yeah, but anything that could be potentially influenced in any way, shape, or form, I'm not. They're not watching that shit. Yep. So. Yep. Um, dad needs decompression time and that needs to be a known thing in the household. Yep. The kids know when, if you leave the house and you come back home, we are not bombarding pops when he walks through that door. Right. And quick hug. Go back to doing what you're doing. Missed you. Little kiss running away. Yep. Once he's sitting down in his computer chair or maybe pops is sitting on the couch, then you can walk over there and be like, this is what I did today. Yeah. But I also make it a point to engage with them. You like, do. I will make it a point to, what, like, in the event that I'm home when you pick them up, what mm-hmm. you learn at school today? Like, we're going to talk about that. I want I want to instill, like, yep. good behavioral patterns. I also have no problem going outside with the kids. Mm-hmm. Like, that should be something that, but that also shouldn't be a, a, a um, 
expected situation. I was say expected. It should be a reward system. Mm-hmm. Oh, you screamed and yelled and punched the window today? No, we're not going outside. Yep. Sorry, you can go sit in your room while I watch TV. You can't go outside for the next week. Right. Right. How were you? How was whatever her name is? Mm-hmm. How were you with, with whatever her name was today? Did yeah. you behave? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm going to go shower, mm-hmm. get into to my non work clothes, and we can go kick a soccer ball. Yeah. Or throw the football or play baseball or. Mm-hmm slide down a water slide or fucking slip and slide or whatever it is that you do outside of mm-hmm. your house. Look at bugs. Just yeah. spend quality time together. Mm-hmm. That should be earned. Yeah, it should. You know, the punishments that I dole out to the kids, it's no longer I'm raising my voice and I'm upset at you. I'm going to take the thing you love the most right now. Mm-hmm. Give me your straws. Yep. Go get me your shark. Then the fucking meltdown happens. There are times I won't even mention the tablet. Give me what you're playing with right now. What's providing you happiness right now? Give it to me. Yep. The consequences of the actions in real life. You decide you don't want to go to work one day. You could be fired. Yep. Day of. The things bringing you happiness can be taken away just as easily. Yep. And it's all in choices that you make. Some people, you know what? I'm recognizing that could be kind of bitchy of me to do that. I don't think it's bitchy at all. You're teaching your kids responsibility. Right. I think that there needs to be a, we can run up and say hello to dad, but then we need to leave dad the fuck alone for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Let dad shower. He needs to get changed. Like you were saying. You you know, it's also important to remember that if you, if you start implementing things like that, the way that we do things, Mm -hmm. that there has to be conversations afterwards. Oh yes. There is always a conversation. And it's never done out of anger. It's done out of, this is what you just did. This is why you just lost what you just lost. Mm -hmm. I love you. Hug whatever, yeah. we want you to be better than that. So remember what happened just now. So the next time we say, don't do that, mm-hmm. you know there's going to be a consequence to it. Yeah, Because that's how life is. Mm-hmm. There are times where I take something away from the kids and they have their fucking meltdown. And then they come out of their bedroom and we have a conversation. They say they're sorry. And we have a conversation. They say, you know, I'm sad. Or you made me sad. And I'll apologize for that. I'm sorry that I made you sad. I did that so you understand whatever, whatever, whatever. I don't enjoy making the kids upset. Right. I don't enjoy making them cry. I don't enjoy taking the things away from them and seeing them distraught. This isn't fun. And I want to stress that to them. I always heard, it hurts me to hurt you. Yeah. I always heard that, but there was never that show of it. Right. Your actions show me that's not the truth. You can say it hurts me to hurt you super angry, but that doesn't mean that it's true to me. That conversation afterwards, I'm sorry that I had to do that. I did that so you can understand this. Mm -hmm. Okay, I get it. You loved me enough to teach me a lesson like that. I can see it as mentally taxing on him, so I try to tell his son to let him get settled. This is met with his son whining or crying and his dad telling me that his son is fine. Which to me is stepping on my toes right in front of his son. Yeah. Yep, that removes all credibility. It is. At that point, I would just shut the fuck up and I'd be like, look, you don't want me doing anything with your children. I'm not watching your children while you work. You need to get with the mom and you guys need to figure out where the kids are going to go because I cannot continue living life this way. You're constantly undermining me. You're showing them that my authority doesn't matter. I would stop watching the children if that continued to persist. And of course, we haven't read the boyfriend side of things just yet. Just based on this first email, I wouldn't tolerate that. I am trying to raise good human beings and you are inhibiting that. And Mm -hmm. I cannot stand by and just let this happen. My boyfriend will do this a lot throughout the night. If I in any way try to make his son. If I in any way try to make his son mind, he will tell me that he is okay. While his dad isn't looking, he will stick his tongue out at me or smile mockingly. Wow. At five years old. Wow. That kid's manipulating the fuck out of this situation. Wait until he's 10. Wait until he's 15. You are raising a very chaotic, unstable man. Yep. That already understands how to manipulate the situation. And already knows that he can undermine a woman. And has no respect whatsoever for for the the parental figures at all. Because dad lets him do whatever the fuck he wants. Right. Dude, that I, 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 I'm not a big proponent on hitting kids. Mm-mm. I'm really not. Like, even spanking them on the butt, like, because of my childhood, I'm, I, I have a hard time with it. I don't like right. that shit. I think that there are much better ways to parent, but those that kind of situation, like it would take everything I had not to hit him underneath of the chin and make him bite his tongue. Mm-hmm. Just one good time. You know, I have one. Of, I have spanked the kids. 
not to the point to where there's marks or anything. They get a tap on their butt and the action yeah. of it is what scares them. Right. Because it's so out of character for me. That is when they know that they really fucked up. Right. In those moments, I am instilling in them one day somebody is going to fucking hit you and it's going to hurt a lot more than me just tapping your butt. Right. But that also correlates. Kids don't have an understanding of things. Right. So when our daughter makes a beeline for the fucking road and you got to grab her arm and swat her ass. Right. That sting is not a fuck you. That sting is a correlation to that road made that hurt. So I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah. People can break habits by snapping rubber bands on their wrist. Mm -hmm. Pain is the best teacher next to embarrassment. Yeah. Like, and again, that doesn't say you should fucking come down on your kids. But if it comes down to them being completely safe and not running into the road Mm -hmm. where cars are doing 60 miles an hour in a fucking neighborhood, like, yeah, I just, that blows my mind. And that fucking disrespect with the tongue thing, even though I would like to, I would never do that. Right. There, That shit needs to be like, oh man. I would do a pat on the butt for that. Ooh. I shouldn't have used the word spank. When I hear the word spank, I'm thinking of like marks left on butts. Yeah. I'm doing, it's a pat. A swat. Yeah, a little, like if I had a flip flop, a little, get it together. I can't believe that she has told him that he does that and nothing has been done to correct that. Yeah, yeah, that would be a big fucking problem for us. I'm going to be honest. That would be a relationship ending for me. If I was with somebody and they allowed their children to treat me this way, I'm yeah. good. Yeah, you're supposed to put your partner first. I am not going to live my life in an environment around Yep. you're absolutely just, what's the word I'm looking for? Not chaotic. It's not negative. It's, it's disrespectful, not respected. There is no level of respect there. What's going to happen when that kid is 10 to 15 years old, hits a growth spurt and is bigger than she is. And she says something to him and he backhands her. Pushes her. We, yeah. What are you going to do then? As as a man. Mm-hmm. You're going to learn. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to put your hands on your mother or mm-hmm. another woman. We're not doing that. Hopefully our son never gets to that point. Right. I At 15 years old, when your testosterone is peaking and you think you're a fucking man, sometimes you got to be knocked down a peg. Mm-hmm. We've talked in previous podcasts that I believe that every man wants to test his father at some point. Yeah. Do I, do I think that it'll actually happen? Probably not. Mm-hmm. But... It, Every man goes, I think I could take him now. Mm-hmm. I think I'm at that point where like, I'm the fucking man now. Yeah, every it's man time, has that moment of fuck him. It's time to retire that old motherfucker. Mm. You're the old warrior. You can make decisions. It's my duty to protect now. Yeah. When you are raising a child, you are raising your fucking replacement. Mm-hmm. Ooh, man, I'm fucking sweating. That tongue thing made me heated. I do that with the kids. I catch that shit quit. We don't gloat. We don't brag. Last night we were sitting on the couch and each of them wanted to sit next to me. And sissy sat next to me for a little bit. And then she did something to get in trouble. And she was standing in the corner. So brother slid in. I was like, okay, you can sit with me for a little bit. And then sissy comes out of the corner. And I was like, you can sit here with us now if you want to. Well, I was sitting in the middle. Now brother is. And then he started gloating. I'm sitting in the middle. Yeah. Scoot your ass down. Sissy, come sit in the middle. We don't do that. Yep. Yep. We don't gloat. We don't brag. We don't instigate. Because you just did that. Now you lost it. He will continually whine and throw tantrums throughout the evening, and his dad pretty much sits and watches him. Is he sitting and watching him, or is he sitting on his phone? This is wildly frustrating to me because I am the type to stop this type of behavior in its tracks. Should be stopped in its tracks. And if it continues, it leads to punishment. I do not know how to let go of the situation and let him parent the way he needs and turn off my want to parent over him. Mm Mm-mm. No way in hell I would tolerate that shit. You don't want the, you don't want me to parent your children the way that I parent my kids and you can see that there's a difference in their behavior. I did not sign up for this. Right. Yeah. I did not sign up for this. You're right. 15 year old, this kid, this behavior, I'm good. I'm not trying to get a concussion. I'm not trying to get something thrown at me. I admit I will tell him right in front of his son that he needs to tend to him, which leads to us arguing throughout the night. So... You guys argue throughout the night because you caught him in something that he shouldn't be doing. And I would also do that. Attend to your fucking kid. You don't want me doing it. Yep. Take care of your child. Yep. You guys, there has to be a higher hierarchy in the house. This kid, this five-year-old thinks he's top shit in this house. Mm-hmm. He gets away with anything. What is, how old is this man? 32-year-old. 32-year-old gets walked on by a five-year-old. Probably gets walked on by a lot of people in life. 
and I don't mean that to be a disrespectful statement, but if that's the way that you are with your kids and you're okay with your kids being that way because you don't want to stand up and be a parent, what I mean, how does that work with your coworkers? They step on you and you just take it? Like there's a level of respect that needs to be maintained at all times. Is there just a level of I don't care? Right. Like you don't want to deal with it. It's easier to just let them cry it out and scream and throw the tantrum versus actually putting your foot down and implementing something. Yeah, it's a behavioral trait that like you should not be reinforcing. Allowing it to just happen, you're reinforcing that bad behavior. Right. We have discussed our problems over the children after the children go to bed, but they never seem to get resolved. We find ourselves going in circles. Neither of us wants to lose our relationship, but we are both concerned about our future together because of the continuous arguments when we have all of the children. How can we live happily and not step on each other's toes while kids grow? This is going to get worse. This is going to get worse. There is no happy ending to this. No. So either you guys come to a, a mutual understanding of things or this is going to end. Yeah. You need to sit down and have a structured list of the way the parenting is going to happen and it needs to be adhere, adhered to. Mm-hmm. This is no different than setting boundaries with us. Right. These are things that the kids are doing that are unacceptable to me. Mm-hmm. Well, it's acceptable to me, but it is not to me. I'm your woman. Yeah. I'm supposed to be here long term. Mm-hmm. You are supposed to be raising a good man. These are the things as a woman that I see is not acceptable of a man's behavior. If you acted like this as a man, I would not be here. Yeah. But he's five, but he won't be forever. Mm -hmm. This is not a hard scenario. There's research coming in out now that it is pretty much solidified that one through five is the main character building of children. Right. At this point, you guys are going to have a very hard time unlearning all of this behavior because it's solidified. I know this is only my point of view. So here's my boyfriend's. Hello, I'm the boyfriend. I've read through her email like she asked. She has some points that I'll stand by as I'm far from great in the relationship. We both admit there is an issue here that we would like to resolve without splitting up and there's always two sides to a good story. So with that, I'll write my side. My daughter does try to intimidate her eight-year-old sometimes and when she does, she is corrected when I'm here. Her daughter does these things to a certain degree as well. Okay, pause. No, we're not roping in another child. Well, she does it too. Right. So that two wrongs don't make a right, first and foremost. The other thing is, because that's what you're about to say, right? Cause I won't I, continue with your thought. Okay, because I was going to say something else and you jumped in with that. So the, the main thing in that is that when behavior happens, it needs to be corrected immediately. Mm-hmm. You can't correct behavior the next day and be like, you did this yesterday, therefore you're in trouble. Right. They've lived their life for a full 24 hours. That shit's not fresh to them. It needs to be corrected in the fucking moment. Right. That's where I was going, but because you brought up the whole. Yeah, it needs to be correct in the moment. So it's corrected when I'm here. When you're not there, your girlfriend has no fucking control over anything because you have shown your children they don't have to respect her. Yep. Bro, I'm going to be honest. You're the main common denominator in all this. You are really failing your children and you're failing your girlfriend. It's pretty harsh. Is it the truth? I mean, so far, it's what it sounds like. We haven't gotten through his side of things, but there's a whole lot of problems here. There's a lot of fucking problems here. I love that you're um, so matter of fact. Yeah. I do. I respect that about you. Oh, thank you. That, that, um, I think that's why you and I are able to have the conversations that we're able to have and Mm -hmm. unpack things without a bunch of, um, other things on top, like pulling shit out of a trunk. You know what I mean? Like. If this is the issue, you address the issue, not not the Dave Chappelle story. Well, first, you got to understand I was on my period. You know what I mean? From the right. killing himself. That doesn't happen. Like we have the fucking conversation that needs to be had. Yeah. We correct the shit. We move the fuck on from it. Mm-hmm. I, I just I don't know. I, I respect that about you. It's it's nice that you are. Um, you say it with your chest and Thank you're not you. afraid to say it with your chest. Thank you. I get insecure about that sometimes. I know that. I know you do. And I know that when you say things like that and then I say something that doesn't exactly agree with you because I'm very good about not like just solidifying your point. Like I will always devil's advocate or mm-hmm. you sometimes off camera, you're like, do you really feel that way? And I'm like, no, babe, just, you know, I guess yeah. sometimes I got devil's advocate so that we have that, that what if scenario. But right. like, I, I do feel that the issue in this scenario is that he is not parenting. Right. That's a fucking problem for me. And like your kids are a result of your leadership. Mm -hmm. Okay. Men's job is to protect, provide, and lead. And for a long time, I believe that not all men were capable of being leaders. I don't believe that anymore. 
I believe that if you are married or you are a parent, you are in a leadership role whether you fucking want to be or not. Oh, yeah. So it's not that you're not a leader. It's that you are not a good leader. Have you not stepped up to it yet? Right. So if you are not stepping into that role and doing the things that you're supposed to be fucking doing, you're you're failing as a man because you are an inept leader. Okay. Her daughter does these things to a certain degree as well. Um, I would also try to intimidate somebody who is continuously intimidating me. Right. I would try to continue to stand up for myself if that's what's happening from what I've deduced. Is, is that a thing for women? Like, is that a normal thing for you guys to bully each other like that? Because with men, mm-hmm. it goes to a certain extent and then physical violence happens. That is normal. Okay. One of them will wrestle or you'll wrestle and mm-hmm. one of them will be the the dominant one. And then that back and forth stops. Because the hierarchy is is established with the children, right? Um, when it comes to women, we are we are vicious bitches. It is there is a definitely a hierarchy, um, but it's like a mean girl's hierarchy. It is maybe I'm the more popular one, so I can say all of this shit about you, and everyone's gonna believe me. You can still be a part of the friend group. Just know if you fuck up, yeah, I might say something. And because I'm the more liked one in the friend group, they're going to side with me. That kind of shit. Okay. Um, when it comes to this kind of like one-on-one intimidation, I don't feel that intimidation anymore. No woman can intimidate me. A woman could piss me off. I might feel disrespected and might want to throw some hands, but you're not going to intimidate me. And in my de-evolution mindset... There was very much that intimidation of if a woman came up to me and tried to intimidate me, I will, I would definitely like posture back. I'm going to fucking intimidate you back. And if I saw it more of like in the hardcore feminists, that kind of thing would happen. Now that I've removed myself from that and I have more of an elegance, elegance and grace. There are other women in my life with elegance and grace. So that's really not a thing anymore. But that intimidation formed in childhood will grow into adulthood. And from my experience in life, it is more of that hardcore radical feminist that try that intimidation tactic. So, um, yeah, there is definitely that want to like step up. But there's I don't think there would ever be hands thrown. It would definitely be more of a verbal warfare, manipulation, mental manipulation thing kind of happening. Make you question yourself, your self-worth as a woman. I might be better than you as a woman because of X, Y and Z. That kind of thing. These behavioral traits, again, are going to be taught and, and like instilled and will carry over into manhood or uh, adulthood. Yes, they will. Yep. Our kids do get along. However, they also don't. Of course, they're kids. Yeah. It's normal. Even as an adult, there's just some adults that I don't get along with. Right. You don't have it's to. It's okay. Yep. I am civil with them, though. Yeah. That's civility is important. I'm actually very proud of that within myself that I'm able to remain civil with people I may not agree or get along with. And with four of them, it's nonstop, which in turn causes a lot of stress. We are great when we don't have all the children and she is right. We do parent entirely different. We do parenting entirely differently. We both try to give into one another's way of parenting for the sake of trying. So why does it have to be one set way? You are very strict and very stern. And when there is a discipline to be dolled out that I don't know what could be the appropriate one. I might be too soft on this. I will go to you and be like, Pops has given out the discipline on this one. Right. Because say little man does something. I did not have a male figure in my life, right? I didn't have a dad growing up. I did not have a positive male influence in my life at all in my childhood, growing into adulthood. Um, So our son might do something and I won't catch it or I might catch it. And I don't understand long term for him to be a gentleman, what it means, like the negative thing that he just did. I don't know. So I'll bring it to you and be like, okay, I I, I need you to evaluate this and doll out the consequence, like discipline. I think that is one way that we have worked really well on incorporating both of our parenting styles. Because when you doll out the punishment, it's not a severe getting an ass whooping. Right. It's going to be either you're going to stand in the corner or you're losing the TV for the next two days. Right. But there's also conversations that be had from man to man. Right. Right. Yeah. 
that matters. That mattered to me as a kid. My mom yeah. had one man um, who was not um, an aggressor. Mm-hmm. His name was Tim. Tim Walker. Um, he was around for a few years, but anytime I got in trouble, Tim talked to me. Yeah. It was always a conversation. And like, there was always a, this is a why or a how it was never violent first. Mm -hmm. I I gotta be honest. I don't think he was ever violent with me. I think it was always just a conversation. He never screamed at me ever. Um, I loved him. Do what? I loved him. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Just knowing that he's had this kind of impact on you. Yeah. If this man called you out of the blue and was like, I'm dying. I need something. I would be there in a heartbeat and I would support it. Yep. In a heartbeat. But my he, wife and I are on the way, like yeah. full support. He he did a lot. You know, he just, yeah. he was also an alcoholic and like there there was, a, he had his flaws like everyone else does. Right. But he tried. But he had an impact on me that was like any other man that, that we, that she had in her life that had ever come through. Unlike, unlike. any other man. What did I say? Like. Oh yeah. Unlike any other man that had ever come through. Mm. Um, But it had a profound effect on me and the why of things matter. And yeah. if you don't think the why of things matter, think about the last time your kid went, Why? But why? But why? Mm-hmm. They're trying to understand. Yeah. It happens into, because I said so, it doesn't work. It happens into into teenage years. Mm-hmm. And into teenage years, they understand enough that if they ask you why, it's because they want a fucking an answer it's a from reason. you. Right. Yeah. Not an understanding. It's a very different, different why. Mm-hmm. But kids will ask you why and you'll give an answer and they'll go, but why? And they'll give you, and they will fucking do that for an hour if you let it go on that long because they don't get it. They're at that stage right now. Right. And like, it's pushing me to think too. How can I say this to where they go? Oh, right. I, that whole discussion on why I was in the TikTok comments on one of my videos and somebody said whatever they said. And my only response was, if you are living your life without asking yourself why you do you these things, that terrifies me. Yeah. That means that you are just doing whatever you are doing without putting thought into it. There's no consequences. I am led to believe you are a very reckless person. That means danger. I'm good. If you are not asking yourself why you do things or maybe why somebody else does something, for example, you do something. I'm mentally ill. If I don't ask myself why I'm going to blow up and have an extreme and I could probably fuck up our relationship really bad. Right? Ask why. In children, when you instill that because I told you so, they're not going to ask you why anymore. Right. If they ask you why, it's going to be met with punishment. If they start asking themselves why, they don't have an outlet for that. So now they're going to start internalizing everything and eventually they're going to stop asking themselves why because they don't have the answer. Right. Terrifies the fuck out of me. I encourage the kids to ask me why. I love that shit. It's annoying as fuck after a while, but yes. It does. Then it ends with after the 40th why. I don't know. I don't have another answer for you. That's it. <laughs> All I got. <laughs> Her kids are more polite when it comes to being told what to do. Mine can be as well. However, they don't do like they should. I get really bothered when my girlfriend gets onto one of the kids for something minor. I understand she's stressed when I'm at work. However, none of the kids should be grounded for ju- just for flipping a light switch. That is an exaggerated example, not to be taken literally. Well, I'm going to take it literally and I'm going to create it into a scenario. Before you do that. Okay. Before you do that, why would you send us a fake for instance? Yeah. Why not actually give us a for instance? Holy shit. That's a good idea. I didn't even catch on to that. That's the whole point you're emailing us. Right. Do you take this seriously? Are you just doing this because she asked you to? You want to hear something really stupid? Yeah. When I was like six years old. Okay. I balanced every light switch in the house. <laughs> Like right in between, right in between. Hell yeah. So that it would be easier (coughs) for whoever had to turn the light on, turn the light on. That was my thought process. And I was fucking proud of myself because I balanced all the light switches. You get in trouble for it? I did. You know why I got in trouble for it? Because when you balance the light switch, it's on. So even though enough current isn't going to the lights, turn the lights on, it's still drawing power. It's trickling. When I had to turn all the light switches off, one of them sparked. (gasps) I got, I got berated like, can't believe you do that. That's stupid. Blah, blah, blah. Like I was, I was shit on for it. Yeah. But there was a lesson learned there. I will never forget that because when I flipped that last light switch, it sparked. Do I think it could like 
if I could if I could do that again and like recreate that, would it do it again? I don't know. Yeah. But it fucking happened. And it was enough for me. Yeah, no, that's happened to me once or twice. When I clicked it and it sparked, I'm like, holy shit, is the house going to catch on fire? Right. As an adult, I know that that's drawing power. Mm -hmm. As a kid, I thought I was doing something cool. Not only was I occupying my time by balancing a light switch. I you were helping people. I thought I was helping people. Mm -hmm. And had that situation been played out differently, why would you do that? Well, I was making it easy for you guys. Okay, well, it's not making it easier because it's... That's nothing. Right. I, th- I appreciate you trying to do that, but let me explain to you why we don't do that. Mm-hmm. And then you could have taken them out to the meter box and showed them the wheel. Yeah. And as light switches are on, that makes that turn, which costs us money. Like there could have been a whole lot of explaining that that would have helped little me understand why we don't do that mm-hmm. instead of berating. Yeah. So do I think this made up situation deserves grounding? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Are you guys living paycheck to paycheck and you're struggling to make ends meet and the lights are left on all the fucking time and there's been conversations about it over and over and over again? Yeah. Like our back door being left open? They get in trouble for that now. Yeah, because without our solar panels on the roof right now, mm-hmm. our electric bill is four to $500 a month. Mm-hmm. I'm not living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. But why the fuck do I want to spend $500 on a power bill because the kids want to leave the back door open while they play? We're not doing that. I'm not air conditioning Florida. I'm air conditioning my house. Right. So after the first four or five times of me having to explain that to them, now they get lessons on how to open and close the door Mm -hmm. or I make them bring all their stuff inside and then go play in the room. You wanted to play outside, you should have closed the door. You wanted to be outside, not half in, half out. Mm -hmm. I understand that there's a disconnect there because they're afraid of somebody or they're afraid of being alone or they're afraid of monsters or whatever the reason is for them to be afraid of closing the door. Right. But there is a fear there for them. And I get that, Mm -hmm. which is why they don't do it. Because if one of them is outside by themselves and I close that door, they want to come in. They don't want to play anymore. Really? Every time. Huh. Because there's times one of them's out there playing. I have the door closed and I'm waving at them through the window and they're content. Because you can see them. Oh, that makes sense. At five and six years old, I was riding my bicycle around the neighborhood. Yeah. And you're also... A lot of traffickers and stuff. Well, it was a very different time, but yeah. still, like that—that that wasn't a fear for me. I would, they don't I understand would trafficking, that. right? So whatever that fear is for them is is a, it's a um, illogical social anxiety, uh, not social anxiety, um, separation anxiety. Yeah, I think that's what that comes down to, and I think that as they get older, that'll go away. But that door doesn't stay fucking closed. You're not playing yeah. outside. So in that scenario, if, if it's a grounding because the light switch conversation has been had 15 fucking times, I can see why the grounding needs to happen. Yeah. What's the point of telling them not to do something if they're not going to do it and there's no consequence to it? Mm-hmm. My mind went to that little five-year-old <clears throat> who is throwing a temper tantrum all day, has been clicking the lights on and off, has had one conversation of stop clicking the lights. Personally, me, it would be, I understand that you're frustrated, you're upset, whatever you're going through. Stop clicking the lights. Next time you click that, there's going to be a consequence. I haven't decided what it is yet, but we're going to find out. Click. And then whatever that consequence is, that's the consequence. If you're grounded, you're grounded. I'm taking the TV for a week. I'm taking the TV for a week. We can watch TV, but it's whatever I want to watch. Knowing that that five-year-old sticks his tongue out at her Mm -hmm. and acts the way that he does. I'd ground him too. In a hypothetical light switch situation, do you think that he should be like, stop doing that? And he's like, click, 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 click. Oh, yeah, he's just yeah. getting it. Yeah, because why not? Fuck you. What are you going to do about yeah. it? Yeah. You going to yell at me? Yeah. Dad's going to tell you not to do that. Yeah. Yep. Hypo- I, hypothetically. Yeah. Because this is a made up scenario, but we can give hypotheticals. I can give hypotheticals all day long. <laughs> we may have to break this into two emails. We might. Her, her per- portion as like episode 35 and, and his, his. Per- portion is 36. Ooh, that's a good one. So when we end this episode, we need to re-record the intro so that I can fake it. I have noticed my two kids will get in trouble for something. Her two won't if they do it. Or if if they do it, it's not as bad. That has been brought up in mine and her conversations. We do communicate when it comes to the kids, but not like we should. However, though, that has been getting better lately. This ties into what we were saying earlier about both sets of kids need to be parent the same. Right. So if... Her kids don't get in trouble for something. His kids shouldn't get in trouble for something. If they're doing the same thing, it needs to be the same punishment across the board. Mm -hmm. This is a, that's a simple fucking solution. Right. I am going to say this though. Say the five-year-old does something and this has been a repeated conversation for that five-year-old, right? And at this point he's getting grounded because I've told you four times we don't do this. You're not getting the point. Now I'm going to start, there's punishments. Right. 
But that's a repetitive behavior. Right. If the other five-year-old does it once, I'm not going to ground him. He's going to get a warning just right. like the other one did. That's common sense. 10, 20 life rule. <laughs> right. That's a good point. That's a good point. And if your kids are doing that more than hers are, of course, the punishment is going to be different because right. the severity of it is going to increase. Mm -hmm. Okay. Didn't even think to say that. Didn't even think of that example. Go you. Toss, toss. toss, toss. Galinda. I think I could play her. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I couldn't get that high pitched singing voice she does. I'm more of like an alphaba, but I could, I got the, I got the spunk. Yeah. The moxie. <laughs> That's funny. All the kids do repeat themselves pretty much constantly, but my son does it the most. When my son does these things, does these whining fits, it does get annoying. And I do in fact say he's fine. Let him cry it out. I'm like that for two reasons. One, surprisingly enough, when he realizes it's not working, he quits. Well, sometimes. Two is, and I'll... Did he I'll, say, well, sometimes? Yeah, well, okay. sometimes. Two is, and I'll own up to it, I'm exhausted just like her. You're not parenting. No, you're not. You're just letting your kid do whatever he wants. Both of your options are not parenting. No. So now what? Because I think her option is parenting. Yeah. Even if... If that shit goes on for an hour and he's like, okay, I'm not getting my way and stops. That's an hour of, of you hearing that. And that's, him <laughs> that's him still getting his way. Right. That's him still getting his way. I'm going to stop crying. Oh, you stop crying. Okay, here now you can have it. Yeah. I got my way and I cried the whole time. Nobody yelled at me. Yeah. They lived with it. That's definitely not the way you want your kids to behave in a social socialized society. What's going to happen when your son goes to get a job one day and the boss tells him to clean the freezer and he doesn't want to do it and has a complete fucking meltdown in front of a whole bunch of people and then loses his job. What happens when your son is in his 40s, can't hold a job, and is stuck living with you because you failed him as a child because you didn't want a parent because you were too tired? Yeah. You know, I, I if there was a concern when you emailed us in that we were going to take sides... Um, entering into this, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't either. I had no idea what we were reading. I didn't know what this was about. I didn't know that there were children involved. Didn't either. We had no idea what the email was about. We just knew that a couple finally wrote in. Right. Um, so far, I am certainly taking the side of, of the girlfriend in this. Th this behavior is absolutely unacceptable. And I think that you are failing as a dad and you are failing as her, as her man. Yeah. I understand that you're exhausted and life is stressful. This... Uh, I asked you if you were lazy earlier and this, I view this as lazy. It is. It is lazy. It's not, not wanting to deal with it. Here, here's yeah. a thought though, right? This, this is one of those things that is a reoccurring issue. Right. And instead of nipping it in the bud and making it stop, mm. they're living through this over and over and over again because he's too tired at the end of the day or just doesn't feel like dealing with it that he hasn't corrected the problem. So instead of correcting the problem and not having to worry about this shit moving forward, he's allowing it to continue it to happen, which is in turn making, you making more exhausted. it worse. Yeah. Nip it in the fucking bud, make the shit stop and go about your life when you're tired. And that starts, you'd be like, not now. Mm -mm. I'm tired. I'm not dealing with this right now. Yeah. Okay. Dad's dad's tired. He fucking means that shit. I am not doing that. Yeah. The kids know that now with me too. Yeah. Not right now. Okay. I love you. I love you too. Go play. Yep. They know. I, I'm going to full disclosure. I, I, um, I, I believe that I hold men to a higher standard than I hold women. Mm-hmm. And I don't care if that makes me a misogynist or a bigot or whatever the fuck I, people want to call me for that statement. But I, I do. As a man, as a husband and as a father, we have certain things that we are supposed to aspire to be. Right. We have jobs that are fucking our jobs and no one else's. And when it comes to raising our sons, mm -hmm. it's our fucking responsibility to make sure that our sons are, are proper men. Right. So when I hear I'm too tired... I have a real fucking problem with that. I have a problem with that. That is not an acceptable answer. I'm no. fucking tired. Then you shouldn't have had kids. Right. You know, we are hearing constantly what happened. I don't understand what's happening. Why are men growing up to be the way men are now? Why are they this? This is why. Because on average, a parent spends 35 minutes a night with their children. In the course of a 24-hour day, 35 minutes on average that's not spent doing bath time, homework, or other activities that are required. 35 minutes. Go watch TV. Here's your tablet. Here's your Game Boy. Here's your Switch. 
Get the fuck away from me. I'm going to play on my phone and watch TV, eat dinner by myself, play on the computer, whatever it is that I'm doing that's not raising my children. Two to three times a week, I take the plant, the kids plant shopping with me. Yeah. And that's an hour each. That's just plant shopping. Right. There's the kids also- help me cook. Mm-hmm. We play outside. Um, park time. Park time. Uh, we go to the beach. We went to the beach the other day. Like, even at bath time, like, daughter washes herself up and whatnot, and then we have a tea party. She gets her little tea set set up, and she has her potions and whatnot going. And then for about 20 minutes, outside of maintaining hygiene as a human being... You play. I'm having a tea party with my daughter. Mm-hmm. You're connecting. You're establishing and reaffirming the relationship with your children. Mm-hmm. It's not fucking hard to do. No. Kids remember that. They do. Yeah. <laughs> As an adult, think about your childhood. Think about all the dope shit your parents did if they did it. And if they didn't do it very often, I guarantee you remember the time that like dad took you fishing. The right. one fucking time it happened, regardless of the situation, even if you didn't want to fucking be there, you remember that he took you. Mm-hmm. You know, now that things have calmed down with the podcast and I'm able to dedicate more of myself back into being the stay at home mom and the stay at home wife over the last two or three months, almost daily, one of the kids tell me, mommy, I'm so happy. Yeah, because you're there. You're present. Like hearing that shit, dude. Babe, daddy. (laughs) (sighs) Homie, buddy, dude. (laughs) The little random I love yous, those get me too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not as good as I used to be when it comes to staying on top of things like the man should. I know there's things I should change for our relationship. I am a broken man that is willing to do better for my family, starting with this parenting issue. Wait a minute. Okay. I, I just need a second for okay. that. Can you can you read that again? Because God damn it. That's twice that I've said that in this, this yeah. series of this series of email. I I really need to dial that back, but I, I'm a little frustrated right now. Yeah. W- one more time, please. Because okay. that I want you to know I also have the kids now saying, Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like, I I am fucking becoming that person. (laughs) I'm not as good as I used to be when it comes to staying on top of things like the man should. I know there's things I should change for our relationship. I am a broken man that is willing to do better for my family, starting with this parenting issue. Why are you a broken, broken man? And how is that your family's fault? That's an excuse. Tell me that's not an excuse. I had a rough childhood, therefore I beat women. That's bullshit. Yeah. You have people that are looking to you to fucking lead. I don't want to hear shit other than what can I do to be better. I don't give a fuck that you're a broken man. I don't care that you got past trauma. I don't care if a a previous girlfriend stabbed you. I don't care if there was psychological manipulation. That shit is in your past. You get to write your story. Are you narrating, oh, pity me, pity me? Or are you going, okay, I got a good woman and I got kids that look up to me that expect me to be a good fucking man, so it's time to, to put that shit away. Am I going to be an example of what a man should be to these children? You know the first Bible quote I ever ever memorized? Yes. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. When I was a child, I thought as a child, spoke as a child, and understood as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Your past needs to be put the fuck away, and it's time to grow the fuck up and lead your house. That verse, the first time you told me that verse, I was like, yeah, okay. After delving into my faith and doing this podcast and seeing humanity for what it is right now in America and actually understanding the values of our marriage, that shit, that shit hits hard. Yeah. I can apply that chapter to almost everything. Yeah. Or that verse to almost everything. I I, got to be honest, man. I I don't do well with that excuses shit. I, I can make excuses all day long. My depression... I'm overweight right now. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. My hormones are off. Money, stress, businesses, employees. I can make all kinds of fucking excuses. You know what I'm doing? I'm making moves. Yeah. Because nobody fucking gives a shit that you're broken. Nobody cares that you had a a rough childhood. Nobody cares that that you're not fucking doing okay right now. Mm -hmm. You have responsibilities to your family. Yeah. Lead. You know, not only do you have responsibilities to your family, you have responsibilities to humanity to raise your son right. Mm Mm-hmm. To his future spouse, yep. whoever he decides to live his wife with, life with, whether that be a wife or whomever, you are going to raise him to be who he is. I, and I don't give a fuck what anybody has to say about what I just said. 
Men, men should be vulnerable. People do care that you went through this shit. All There's of a that time nonsense. And place. Right. You can save that shit. You can save that because I don't, I don't give a fuck. Mm. That mindset doesn't work for me. If that works for you and you want to raise soft fucking men, you do that. I'm not okay with that. You get over your shit. If you've had traumatic things happen to you, you fucking work through it. Mm-hmm. Accept that it happened because you can't fucking change it and you work on, on being better. And you make sure you don't do that to anybody else. Right. Right. You don't make excuses. You don't mm-hmm. get to play the victim. Like things happen in life just because they happen and you're involved in it doesn't mean that it's happening to you. Life happens. And and, and I know that people are going to take that to extremes and you can fucking do that if you want to. I'm going to roll my eyes at it and just ignore you anyways. But if you are capable, if you are a, a physically capable man, all of that shit is not an excuse. Mm-hmm. Able body. If your brain works and your body works, you need to get over that shit. Yeah. You can cry about it. You can process it and move the fuck on. If you need help, go to therapy. Yeah. But don't use it as an excuse as to why you're not fucking doing your duties. I'm going to judge you more for living life like this than going to therapy. Yeah. If I hear a man going to therapy, all right, tell me how you've evolved. How do you feel about yourself now? Yeah. What's that growth like? I can have a conversation with someone going to therapy. Can't have a conversation with somebody with that mindset. If, if you're a married man, the emailer's not. If you are a married man and you say to yourself... Excuse me. I want to be a better husband and a better father. Mm-hmm. And then you have an excuse right afterwards. You're not going to ever be a better husband and better father because you're making excuses in your statement. That excuse is something of the past. What? I was. I thought you were holding the screen up no, in just, front of your face so the camera couldn't see you. This is just comfortable for my arm right now. Um. Oh, that's right. The third camera angle. Oh, I forgot about that. I, I just, I don't know. I have just whatever. I, I don't like that mentality. You are your thoughts become things. The mm-hmm. things that you tell yourself, you believe them. Eventually you will believe them. Your perception of your world is exactly what your world will be. Mm-hmm. The things that you give attention to will be the things that you remember in life. Yeah. This is not okay for me. That statement is a problem. That statement is one of the worst things that I've heard in the entire email. I don't like that mindset. I have no patience for that shit. Yeah. I, oh, man. That's the same as hearing I can't. Oh, yeah. I, the kids don't say that shit. I catch that real quick. I get stern about that shit, too. That's not a playful. Don't say that. Yeah. That is, don't don't say that. We say, I can. Yeah. I don't want to hear I can't. Problem solve. Don't complain. Problem solve. This is what we're built to do. Literally, it is biologically built in us to problem solve and fix shit. Mm -hmm. Not make excuses and complain. Right. Back into the email. As far as my relationship with her kids and hers with mine, I disagree with what she has said. We could all use some closer, better relationships with all of us. I love that. Yeah. I love that sometimes. There's a whole lot of accountability there. Yeah. And I think that that goes across the board for all households. Yeah. There's always room for improvement. Mm-hmm. This falls into the, the perfect conversation that we had the other night. I don't believe in that. You always have room to grow. Mm-hmm. Always. We are a blended family, but that doesn't mean this can't work. I agree. I do go against what she says sometimes when I feel it's not a huge deal, as she does this too, just not as much. So you guys are, are removing the authority from mm-hmm. each other. You are taking away all accountability as a parent. Right. If she's doing it and she's not doing it as much, it could be a uh, retaliation kind of thing. Could be. If you're going to undermine me, well, I'm going to undermine you. There are things, um, there has not been many instances. I can't even remember the, the one instance I'm trying to think of. It was when we first moved in together and something happened and I disagreed with what you did to the kids. And I, I kept my mouth shut because it wasn't drastic. It wasn't, you didn't beat them. You didn't spank them. It was, I think you raised your tone or you said something in a certain way and it triggered something in me and kept my mouth shut. You did your thing. And I think we had a conversation afterwards or it just in my mind, I talked myself through it and I was like, okay, look, you're in trauma response right now. You need to relax a little bit. Yeah. Either way, if I had undermined you in that moment, that would have altered the whole course of everything. Yep. Yeah. As parents, you need to be a unified front. Mm -hmm. You can talk about the shit afterwards. Yeah. Absolutely talk about it afterwards. But in the moment, you have Mm -hmm. to back each other's play. Right. Because when you do that, you're setting a hierarchy in the house. Mm -hmm. We're king and queen. 
you're the, the prince and princesses. Right. Until we are no longer here or you get your own kingdom, mm-hmm. you don't get to run shit. We do. Yeah. That that undermining each other is a big fucking problem for me. It is. This also comes back into what I said in, in the her part of the email. Mm-hmm. You need to have a, a set expectation of what is and what is not acceptable. Yeah. Whining and throwing tantrums is not acceptable in any circumstance. Mm-mm. If we've given a warning, the first time is a warning. Second time they lose what? Third time they this happens. Like you need to have an understanding of what is what is not yeah. acceptable. And then both of you need to enforce that. Mm-hmm. I just thought you talking about the whining and the tantrum thing. When we're watching shows and movies, I'll point out something on TV and be like, what is he doing? And they'll be like, he's throwing a tantrum. Makes him a baby. Mm-hmm. You can see that grown man right there acting like a baby. Yep. I point that shit out to them because I want them to know even in adulthood, people behave that way and that's not okay. Right. That undermining each other, you are showing them that that's okay in a relationship. Mm-hmm. You are raising somebody to be disrespectful in their next relationship. You are raising somebody who's going to be a bad guy in somebody else's story. I think about that a lot too. I'm going to rewind you. The, um, that movie thing, mm. when you have movie night at home and all the family is in the room watching the movie, mm-hmm. that is a prime opportunity to have life lessons with your children because they're not involved in it. It's right. no different than people listening to our emails and going, oh shit, I do that. Or mm-hmm. oh shit, I can fix that in my life. That pause and having a discussion and what happens in the movie is something that my eighth grade, Mr. Ross, the, the teacher that was at my disciplinary school that I went to, mm-hmm. um, that summer, he stayed in contact with me and he took me to see Major Payne. And after the movie was over, we had a whole conversation about life lessons about that movie. Yeah, I'll never forget that. Like, he stayed in contact with me well after he needed to because I was a problem kid. Like he was trying to be the positive role model in my life. Yeah. And um, he did. Dude fucking had a huge impact on me because of the way that he thought and did things. Uh, I'll never forget that, dude. But that that is, you do that. We do that with the kids. When we yeah. pause something and go, what is happening right now? We do it with each other while yeah. watching movies. We went to <laughs> we see do. Wicked and had a moment where we were like, you see what's happening right now? Oh my God. She just blamed her for that. Right. <laughs> Toxic friendship. <laughs> yeah. We have, but we have those conversations because it solidifies in ourselves our behavioral traits. Yeah. When you have little ones involved, you really, really need to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was a really good thing to bring up too, because I think that's important. And that, that's more of a reason to have family time. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't even recognize that's, that's what I was doing. Yeah. Like that is what I do. Even in like parts where um, two people are being nasty to each other. I'd be right. like, what are they doing right now? They're arguing, right? They're they're saying mean words to each other and they're hurting each other's feelings. Yep. Don't do that. Yep. Earning that mom of the year mug right now. <laughs> we have talked and disagreed in front of the kids at these times. I know this is very bad for the parental roles and it shows our kids instability is fine and it's not. But if you know this, why are you doing it? Right. I also want to touch on it is not bad to have a disagreement in front of children because that shows how you can have a calm conversation right. and find a middle ground. If you're doing it in a positive, healthy way, there's n- there's no negative side effect to having a disagreement in front of kids. Right. You're teaching them resolution to conflict, conflict resolution. Right. The problem is, is if it's conflict about what's going on in terms of punishment and the way that you're supposed to run the house, that's the issue mm-hmm. because you're you're um, destroying the hierarchy of, of the home. Yeah. So, but you should, you should have calm conflict in front of your kids so that mm-hmm. they understand that it's okay to talk through problems instead yeah. of bottling up, instead of screaming and yelling and punching windows. Right. I feel all the kids bad behavior is just a phase and it will pass. Will it? Will will it just pass? Sure, they might mature a little bit, but that behavioral trait will be established in who they are as a person. Look at all the men who put their hands on women. Right. Look at all the men who throw their fists through walls and punch out windows and throw people through windows. Look at all of the women who run around and think that they're entitled to another man's money. Right. It's not a phase. Nope. You, you are showing your child a, that they have a sense of entitlement and that's okay. It's not a phase. I, I, I can't stress that enough. And I'm just going to repeat, it's not a phase. Fucking raise your kids right. Don't, don't think this way. Don't, please. Dear God. <laughs> please, please help me get across the point that this is not a phase. You have entrusted us <laughs> to raise your children 
You have entrusted us to cultivate a kind and nurturing human being as humanity. You've trusted us with a piece of you and children are our responsibility with a little piece of you to raise right. And I hope, I hope that are this we, is getting across to them. Are we having a sermon with peaches right now? In Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's how I pray. <laughs> I was standing outside the other day. You might have seen me on the security camera. The wind was blowing and I'm just looking up at the sky and I'm praying. And I ended my prayer and I was like, I love you. <laughs> Talk to you later, dad. <laughs> That's funny. We are guilty and not perfect. However, a phase can't be broken if nothing is done to help it, right? Did you just negate what you said a second ago in the, in like the very next sentence? It's just a phase and they'll get over it, but a phase can't be broken if nothing's done about it, right? Did you, did that did that really just happen? Can yes. you can you read that together without an interruption? Yes. I feel all the kids' bad behavior is just a phase and it will pass. We are all guilty and not perfect. However, a phase can't be broken if nothing is done to help it, right? With a question mark. So you made a statement, counter pointed your argument, countered your own argument. Cause you know that what you're doing isn't right. If this is the conversations you're having with your girlfriend, I can understand why she's becoming very frustrated because you're right. He did just negate what he said in his prior definitive statement. Unless that's you saying, I feel this way. Logically, I know a phase can't be broken unless something's done to correct it. Then I could see how that. Right. But if that's the case, they're not doing anything to break it. Right. He said that he's just letting the kid cry it out because eventually he'll get over it. Okay. Back into the email. As I said, we don't fight about anything other than the kids. We don't really even fight then. It's just a disagreement. When it comes to any of the kids, I do get protective. That is with anyone, and I will stand up for any one of these kids, even to my girlfriend, when it's over something small. Am I wrong? Does a small thing turn into something big? Or is it okay to let them be kids and not get into trouble over small things that I can't see a reason why they can't do it? I am a more laid-back kind of guy. Wake up, go to work, support my family, come home, relax, play with the kids, etc. Pause. So where's the parenting happening? Right, right. You're willing to go to war with your girlfriend over your kids in terms of small things instead of being a unified front. Mm. And then you say they're just kids. Let them be kids. If you just let kids figure it out on themselves, you're going to have Lord of the Flies. Oh, God. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. That's. We need structure. We have to be parented to be taught what is and what is not okay to do. Right. There are manners that have to be instilled. There are acceptable behavior patterns that are you know, allowed or not allowed. That is your job as a parent. You have, yeah. you have the, I go to work and pr provide like you got that part of the, the man thing down, but you're failing in the, 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 the leadership aspect. Yeah. Being there and being present are two different things. Mm -hmm. Ignoring your kids because they're having a meltdown and you're tired. You're not there or you're not present. You're there. You're sitting on the couch while they're melting down. Mm -hmm. If you want to play with the kids and do that, like that's the time that you should be teaching them things, especially your son. Yeah. So I'm going to take this to a very, very extreme, okay? Serial killers. When psychology is breaking down into the patterns of what creates one, it is always seen that there is a lack of boundaries in childhood and there are never any consequences to bad behaviors. Is that true? Yes. Okay, I don't, I don't do the serial killer thing like you do. So, I could care less. An example is killing animals. Right. A lot of their parents were like, oh, he's just quirky. That is something you put an end to. Right. There was a lack of consequence. There was a lack of a boundary. There was a, we don't fucking do this. That kid was allowed to do whatever he wanted. He figured it out for himself. And then he became a serial killer. Like I said, very extreme. But that shows when there is a lack of boundaries in place, there is a lack of consequence to things. There is a lack of understanding that this is not an okay thing to do. It will evolve. Humans mature. That thought process will mature. Right. Hmm. A negative thought process will always mature. What was that? Hmm. I just, I never correlated the, the behavior maturing with it and becoming more 
more violent, more well, whatever. Well, I did, obviously, because I said that earlier, but yeah. just the way you worded it, I, I didn't correlate it that way. So with all this being said and to the point, what should we do to keep our family together? We are at a point where we both want the issue with our parenting to become like the rest of our relationship, which is great. Thank you both, and we hope to get some answers. We know the podcast is a relationship podcast for the most part and not fully about children. Uh, though we're a personal growth and personal development podcast. Yeah. We want to help people be better. That's mm-hmm. why it's to be better. It's not to be better relationship. Right. It's be a good person. How can we help you evolve? I'm going to be honest. You need to step up. That That's really the solution here. I think that your girlfriend has put up some defenses because she has seen that she is not backed by you when it comes to parenting. And she is on the bottom of the totem pole of this household. So she is going to have to see some very serious commitment from you to actually parent, to actually bring back those defense mechanisms. Maybe the undermining might still happen every once in a while. And that's something that has to be a gentle reminder of after it happens, the conversation's done. I don't know, maybe in front of the kids. Be like, we talked about that. And then correct and be like, no, you're right. Okay, that is the consequence. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. That's going to show a unified front in front of those kids. It absolutely will. I would it do it in front of the kids. It absolutely will. You guys need to sit down and, and like I said, in both of these, these both parts of this is that you need to have a structured, mm-hmm. this is acceptable behavior, this is not acceptable behavior. Yeah. The idea of just being passive and let your kids doing whatever the fuck they want is a problem. It is. That's, that's a big, big problem. Mm-hmm. Dude, if you're one of those dads who are very active in your kids' lives and want to play and have fun and do the dad thing, you are missing so many fucking opportunities to teach your kids how to be good. And allowing your son to like stick his tongue out and disrespect your woman is a fucking problem. Yeah. Like I don't give a shit that you're that you're they are your kids. Mm-hmm. That's your woman. It, right. It's your woman. Nobody should be allowed to disrespect your woman. That's it. That's it. We've yeah. had conversations the first time our son screamed at you. Yeah. I was like, I understand that it's your mom, but that's my wife. And you will not talk to her like that. And as a man, it is it is below you to talk to women that way. Mm-hmm. And we had a long discussion about it. And when he was calm, I brought him back out and we talked about it again. What don't we do to women? And we've had that discussion. Yeah. And he, we'll have it a couple more times. I'm solidifying that shit. Mm-hmm. He came out and he apologized to me after that. I know he did. He was and like, he did it on his own volition. I didn't tell him to do that. Really? Yes. I'm so proud of him. Yep. Yep. That you, you are responsible for the way your kids are going to grow up. You, you not checking that behavior and allowing that to happen will, will make him believe that that is okay to, to treat a woman that way. <laughs> I agree with everything you're saying. What? Are you, do you feel like you're living your Victoria era? I do. Victorian era? I do. Yeah. <laughs> All you need really now nice. is your fan. Uh, oh my God. Yeah, my fan. I have my pipe. <gasps> so... What obviously they need to have, they need to have structure and they need to have an, an understanding of, of the way that they're going to raise the kids. Um, yes, I'm also going to interrupt you. This is going to have fallout with the other parent. If the other parent is on board with how this parenting style is happening and they start enforcing things with this kid, with these children, there's punishments. You mean the co parenting side? The co parenting, yeah. I forgot all about that. That's something that you would also have to prepare for. Who, um, do you remember in the email who whose kids go? To the co-parent? Or are they his kids that go and come back? I don't think it's specified. Okay. That matters. That matters. I'm because gonna, it, I'm going to double check. Yeah, that absolutely matters. Because if, if it's his son and his daughter that go for a week at a time, when they come back to the other parent's house after having an unruly home, you're making it harder on the other parents to solidify ground rules. Both co-parenting parents have to be on the same page for everything. Because if you don't have that structure, you're not going to ever have the kids are going to manipulate the home that they get away with the most. Yeah. That absolutely happens. I see it when I take the kids to Nana's. Right. Right. When they come back, they're fucking terrible. Put our daughter in timeout at her house the other day. Yeah. I'm playing this game. Uh, it just says that the other parents have co uh, split custody, have joint custody every other week and everyone gets along. So it doesn't specify Whose children go where? Yeah, if everyone gets along, then they should all be on the same page. Yeah. Here, here's a, a thought. Why don't the four of you go out to dinner and sit down and go, how do you guys parent the kids when they're there? What do you do? Mm-hmm. How do they behave? Like you have a debriefing between the four of you and figure out what's what. You could do it at home. You don't have to go out. You can literally just have them over for dinner one night, mm-hmm. feed the kids, let them go play Xbox or whatever it is that they do. 
and just sit down and have an adult conversation with the other parents to figure out what is and what is not acceptable to them. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about asking them the way you're asking us? That would be an important conversation to have. You would want that the same structure in both homes. Yeah. I would start that conversation with, we've recognized that his temper tantrums get out of control when we tell him, no, does that happen at your place? Right. Right. Is he sticking his tongue out at you guys? Mm -hmm. Or if it's those kids, it could be hers. We don't know. But either way, that still needs to be, Mm -hmm. that conversation needs to be had either way so that that structure can be had. Yeah. And if it is her kids and her kids are better behaved according to her, why wouldn't you guys correlate with the other parents and figure out what they're doing and implement that in your home across mm-hmm. the board to make sure that all the kids are being treated the same? Right. That also does come down to what you said earlier about the the um, repeat offender thing. When you mm-hmm. constantly do the same shit and you're not learning your lesson, the the consequences become more extreme. Yep. You know that prisons have a point system. Really. So when you go to when you go to jail, if you go to prison or or you go to jail and you get a, get a charge. You get a set of number of points. Those points determine how long you go to prison. Um, if you get convicted a second time for something else, those original points are still on your record. So they call them okay. prison points. So like if like let's say you do something and you need 30 points to do 10 years in prison. I'm making up numbers. I don't know what the point system is anymore. I know what it was in the 90s. Um, and this isn't it. But it, let's say you need you need 30 points to do 10 years in prison and you do something that's a misdemeanor and you get five points. Mm-hmm. And you do something else and you get 10. And before you know it, you're at 30 points over five or six crimes and you have to do that time frame because of all the previous shit that you did. It's the exact same thing that's happening here. Yeah. You are racking up points and, and this is why you're getting in more and more trouble. Mm-hmm. Maybe you explain it to the kids that way. The reason why little Susie Homemaker over here didn't have to do what Ken and Barbie had to do is because she's only got five points. You got 65 and he has 100 prison rules bitch (laughs) i mean right but you could implement that however but like that would actually be a way that they understand based off of i'm gonna gonna write this down and if in six months you haven't re-offended we'll wipe those five points off yes keep going do you i'm just saying you can make an entire structure based off of a point system that's stuck to the fucking refrigerator that everybody can see every day Mm -hmm. i think the point system should be on the fridge like offense point i think those conversations about the point should happen in private I don't, as the children get older, I don't want that to turn into a, I only have 10 points this month. Well, you can't put it on the fridge then. Better than you. Yeah. That needs to be, I think that needs to be private one-on-one. Like, okay, this is what you've done this month. This is where we can improve. What can I do to help you improve on that? I think the point system could still be up on the fridge of, you want to talk to me like I'm a piece of shit, 95 points. I'm taking your phone for the next three weeks. Yeah. I think that the, the guidelines should maybe be put up. I'm curious if their kids have chores. Oh, that's a good question. Right? Because yeah. that, that establishes a discipline. Mm-hmm. It not only not only establishes a hierarchy in the home, it teaches you to work. You're not going to get what you want just because you want it. Our kids have chores at four and five years old. Mm-hmm. And when they turn six and seven, they're going to have new chores. Like as they get older, they're going to have more and more chores. And it's not about them keeping the house clean. It'll be things that are responsible to them, their bedrooms, their bathroom, their laundry. Their laundry. Right. Um, and then obviously things outside of the home, I'm going to have our son start doing like helping me with the trash. I don't expect him to do it. I'll help mm-hmm. you. You take him, take him up from the curb. I'll take him down, make mm-hmm. sure the garbage is taken out. I'll take the recycle out with you, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll help with those things. I don't, I don't need a slave. I want somebody that understands the value of, of having nice things. If you went out and got a really nice car and didn't maintain it, you're not gonna have a very a nice car for very long. Mm-hmm. That's why my cars are so fucking clean. I want my cars to be as nice as they can be for as long as possible. I don't leave trash in my car. Right. We very rarely eat in my fucking car. Like I'm not doing that. I get my cars detailed every week. Like, and if I couldn't afford to have my car detailed every week, I would take that bitch to the fucking car wash and I would car wash my shit by hand. And I would wax and make sure that my car is pristine because that's a reflection of who I am as a person. Mm-hmm. When you get older, your kids get older and move out and they get a place if they're living filth and they got fucking cockroaches everywhere and, and open bags of Cheetos all over the place and, you know, meet a woman and bring a woman home and a woman sees that. They're going to be like, what the fuck? Yeah. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Like there's, you're structuring them for the rest of their lives. So implementing those chores right away are are going to implement like the work ethic. Mm -hmm. If I want to get a new Nintendo game, I have to do all my chores for a month in order to justify them buying me that video game. You know, those things that, and like, there's other things that you can do. And we've talked about this early on that you can buy fake money. Mm -hmm get the little fake dollar bills and coins and, and have a chore system pay list. 
So if you complete all your chores, maybe you'll make 20 bucks for the week. Mm-hmm. You do that for a month, that's $80. You can buy a video game and then still have money left over. Or you could take that $80 and cash it in for real money and go to the movies with a friend. Yeah. And you know, we'll, we'll pay for that. Something like you, and you can have an exchange rate. Mm-hmm. If you get a hundred fake dollars, I'll give you 50 real dollars. Like, to go out and do stuff with your friends. Maybe you want to go roller skating or something and you want to be able to treat your friends versus, you know, you could have a one-to-one exchange rate. That's a thing, but you're going to teach them the value of money. You're going to teach them to work for it so that they don't expect somebody to just fucking take care of them. Mm -hmm. And when they don't have anything, don't buy them shit. Oh, you like the Capri Suns? Well, you didn't fucking earn this week, so you get water. And that's not child abuse. They don't, sugary drink. They don't Come need on. Capri Sun. They need water. So yeah. really, you're being a better parent by not giving them fake sugary drinks, but you're teaching them something in return. Mm-hmm. And that could be like a normal thing that you just always buy those things. And when they stop doing the chores, you stop buying those things. And when they're like, what the fuck? Be like, well, I realize that you're not holding up your end of things as a human being. And as a provider, I don't have to provide that. Yeah. I have to make sure that you have food and water. So here's your water. Mm-hmm. It's healthier for you. If you want the Capri Suns back, you can start doing your chore list. Yeah. You have to earn the things you want in life. Yep. You don't just receive them. Is there any final thoughts on any of that? Um, I feel like we kind of shit on this dude a lot in between these two emails or two parts of the email. And I, I don't want to say that, like, I'm sorry for that because I'm not. I disagree with a lot of things that are happening there, but I also am not there to see what's happening. Right. And it's a very different scenario because we're only responding to what we've seen. Mm-hmm. But he flat out admitted that he doesn't want to do it because he's too tired. Right. Or he doesn't think it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Just because you don't think it's a big deal doesn't mean that it's not going to affect the way that their behavioral traits are established as they grow older. Do you want to raise a warrior of a man that can control himself? Mm -hmm. Or do you want to, to, to just let chaos reign and let them do whatever the fuck they want and think that the world owes them something? Yeah. Because the world doesn't fucking owe you anything. If you want something in life, you got to get up and go get it. Nobody's going to bring that shit to you. What gets me the most is children aren't going to raise themselves. Right. He can't cry it out. You're expecting a child to do something. A, a child. Our daughter thinks rainbows comes from a unicorn's butt. Like, does she really? Yes. <laughs> How can you expect a child with that thought process to understand? Okay, that's not a big deal. As an adult, as a child, you need to understand doing that repeatedly can be a fucking problem. Right. I had no idea about the unicorn butt thing. That's funny to me. Yeah, we saw a rainbow. It was a half rainbow. I think it was yesterday morning or this morning. And she goes, oh, look, a unicorn. And I was like, what are you talking about? And she was like, the rainbow. I was like, what? And she was like, the rainbow, the unicorn butt rainbow. (laughs) I was like, no. That's funny. Yeah. For a while, our son was convinced that thunder was dinosaur roars. Yeah. That's funny. I used to think that it was God bowling. Because I read that in a book at some point when I was a kid. Yeah. The giants or something and the clouds were bowling. Yeah. I tell the kids that when the sky is pink and it's all in the clouds, that Santa's making candy canes. Kids believe that shit and you expect them to just figure it out. (laughs) I do believe I was a little bit harsh. You asked me that. Well, you didn't ask me. You said that was kind of harsh. And I was like, but is it the truth? It is the truth. Right. I am not going to apologize for the delivery. It sucks knowing that a feeling someone's feeling is going to be hurt watching this. They already feel beaten down. And then hearing this going to be like, fuck, it's confirmation that I'm not doing the right thing. Right. Your life's about to change, though. Right. So what are you going to do about it? Right. Like, oh, now you're triggered. Now you're bothered by this. What are you going to do about it? Because yep. your partner feels that way. Mm-hmm. They feel defeated. Like when, when, when you have conflict and it's a reoccurring criticism. Yeah. Eventually, that person's going to feel so beat down that they're not going to bring it up anymore. Mm hmm. When that happens, your relationship's fucking doomed. Yeah, it's over there's, at that point. There's no point in even bringing it up anymore because I've said it a thousand times. Mm-hmm. You've now lost a part of your partner that you will not regain because they no longer feel safe enough talking to you and know that no matter what they do or what they want, you are not willing to take their side and make changes to be better. Right. Which tells them that effectively they don't fucking matter to you. Yeah. I hope you step it up. I hope you become the man that you want your son to be when he's an adult. And I hope you step up for your woman and become a good example for those girls. You have three young girls looking up to you right now, setting an example for what a man's supposed to be. Right. Would you want your daughter being with someone like you right now? I good ask, point. I ask myself that, like raising our son, the way he sees me treat you 
is how he's going to expect to be treated by a woman. Right. And I put myself in that position a lot, especially when the kids are around. Am I behaving the way that I would want my son to accept the behavior? He's never seen me put my hands on you in an unloving way. Right. Never raised my voice to you. Never said anything degrading to you. Never called you stupid. He's only seen us laughing and having good times. Every once in a while, we might have a very serious conversation in front of them. Right. But it's just a conversation. It's just a conversation. We we had, um, I don't know how much of this I want to get into, but I had a conversation with our son the other day about the way that we are, as men, are supposed to talk to people. Mm-hmm. Right? <clears throat> that conversation led into him calling his sister stupid at some point. And I was like, who, who, told, who did that? Like, we both did that. Who did that? Like, where did you pick that up? Because we don't do that. Mm-hmm. We don't use the term stupid when talking to our kids. Yeah. It's important for us to not do that because we don't want to inhibit their free thinking, right? right? Words fucking matter. God spoke it, and then it was. We were made in his image. Therefore, our words have fucking power. Mm-hmm. I believe that with every bar- part of my being. Yeah. So when I heard him do that, I was like, why did you do that? And he told me, and I'm like, we don't do that. And he's like, but they did. And I'm like, I don't care what they did. We are better than that. Yeah. We don't do that. And I made it a point to be like, have you ever heard me talk to your mother that way? Have you ever heard me yell at your mother? And he's like, no. And I'm like, because as men, we do not do that. Mm -hmm. I want to instill in him the way that he is supposed to behave and interact with women so that it's now a behavioral trait and he does not accept that moving forward. Mm -hmm. And- I've also asked him, have you ever heard your mother talk to me like that? And he's like, no. And I'm like, that's because we don't do that to each other. We're instilling that. And yeah. we'll do the same thing with our daughter when when those things happen because you're correcting that in the moment mm-hmm. and it solidifies. And then you have that conversation later. Yeah. Hey, why don't we do that? And then they can explain it back to you. You know, they fucking got it. Mm-hmm. But kids have a limited understanding with the vernacular v- vocabulary that they have right now. So you right. have to find a way to make them understand it. I have conversations like that with our daughter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We don't do that because we're a lady. Yeah, you should do. I hear you say that shit to her all the time. Don't pick our nose in front of people because we're a lady. Pick your nose in the bathroom. Go do that. Yep. Don't <laughs> don't touch boop. <laughs> <laughs> Kids um, are fucking drunk little adults. They really are. This is totally off topic. One of my favorite things that our daughter does is she'll fart and she'll say, excuse me. And then she'll put her hand behind her butt and fan it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I'm like, why do you do that? Because I'm a lady. <laughs> Okay, I mean, yeah, fan in it. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, ladies don't fart in front of other people. I remember that. Oh my gosh. Do you remember the first time I farted in front of you? I was sleeping. <laughs> I was sleeping. And it must have been happening for months. I'm coming Actually, over for sleepovers. <laughs> I, I heard you fart in the bathroom once before <gasps> I heard you fart in your sleep. Yep. You're not even supposed to know that I have an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> that shit's funny. I think I remember that instance and I was so embarrassed and I was like, it is what it is. Yeah. If he brings it up, he brings it up. If not, he's he's chill. He's cool. He's not going to say nothing. And you didn't. Until now. Until now. I had no idea. Yeah. I thought I got away with it. Shit happens. <laughs> when you told me that I farted in my sleep, I was devastated. Every, everyone does. I was devastated. You know what I realized I started doing? I've been having violent dreams. Mm-hmm. Is that necessary? Um, I'm going to answer it real okay. quick. What I was going to say was, is I've been having really bad dreams mm-hmm. and I'm getting violent in my dreams and I'm waking myself up punching and kicking. And last night I woke myself up like talking in my sleep. Yeah, I heard like a grunt or something. Mm hmm. Yeah. I almost kicked the fuck out of you the other night. Like I kicked and when my my foot hit the bed, it landed on your leg. And I was like, oh, sorry. And I rolled over. Had I kicked on bed level, I'd have kicked the fuck out of you. I don't know what's going on with my sleep patterns, but like, so at least all you have to deal with is farting. I'm getting physical, fighting for my fucking life in my sleep. I don't even remember your foot hitting me. I must have been in a coma. You would have if I had kicked you. (laughs) I'd probably been like the fuck. (laughs) Yeah, I should move my nightstand. <laughs> I I know that I know you know when I'm starting to fall asleep, not just because of my snoring, but because of my twitching. Yes, and like you'll lay there while I'm snoring, but the moment the twitching starts, you're like I gotta move. Because yeah, I'll I'll let it happen for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Depending on how severe your twitching is, there there's 
I have a scale for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I'll, I'll monitor. Like if you do your first Twitch, it's always like a little tiny one. And I'll like, I'll lay there. If they are, if they are frequent, like rapid session, like small ones, I'm getting the fuck out of there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, if it's one and then you, you're snoring and then it's another one, it's good. I'll lay there and I'll fall asleep and it's a night. If there's one and the next one's very violent, yeah. I love you rolling over. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's something. Wow. I know you very well. <laughs> I wonder what causes that, though. Um, I, I think it is a lifetime of looking over your shoulder. Really? Yeah. If anybody knows why that is, leave that in the comments. Actually, I have two call to actions. One, if you know why I do that, I'd like to know why. Yeah. Because Googling it has not helped me at all. Um, Unless I just don't know how to Google, which is a strong possibility. I'm, Could be. You know, I'm older than Google is. Yeah. So um, the other thing is... Uh, two things actually demolition man didn't have the internet i just have to point that out for all of you guys who like the movie demolition man yeah we were watching that and she was like oh that's only six years away and i'm like they don't have google they obviously made this before the internet yeah um and they actually did yeah they actually did the other thing the other call call to action that i have for you guys is if you are a father when do you take the opportunity to be the father and by that i mean like if you take your kids fishing do you give them life lessons do you, do you take the moment, do you take a moment in the moment mm -hmm. to give them life lessons that are not a disciplinary situation? All right, just like a hey son. This is why we do this. Mm -hmm. Because those those moments matter. And it's not just about passing down skills. Like if you go fishing and you teach them how to fish, that's super fucking dope. Yeah. But the conversations that you have with your kids while you're fishing, they will never forget those because it's a bonding moment. And it could be the same thing if you're teaching them to throw a football mm -hmm. or whatever it is that they're into that you're participating in with. You can have in-depth, like soul-touching conversations with them in those moments mm -hmm. that will build them up to be the man or men that you want them to be. So if you are a man watching this podcast, in the comments, tell me what some of those times are. And if you're feeling really fucking froggy, tell us the for instance of what the story was. Maybe that will help other fathers go, hey... I'm missing opportunities to be a good fucking dad because I didn't think to do this. Yeah. We need to come together as men like real shit. Like we need to stop being so detached. We don't have societal cultures anymore where we're a tribe. Right. It's not healthy competition anymore. It's there's no competition anymore. Men are so recluse and worried about us that we're not interacting with other people to get that feedback. It takes yeah. a village to raise a child. We've heard that it's been stated for centuries. Because other men have valuable lessons that can be taught that have not been taught to me. Mm -hmm. And other women have valuable shit with raising children. Right. When an old woman stops me in public and shares a memory because something my daughter did and reminds her of something her daughter did, I fucking listen. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Did you ever see that interview with Mac Miller where he was like, the, the guy doing the interview was like, if you could talk to anybody at this park, who would you talk to? And he saw a 75, 80 year old couple sitting on a bench. He's like them. Mm -hmm. And the guy was like, really? Why them? He's like, imagine the stories that they have to tell. Like the life experience. Right. Come on. They've got more to offer me than every, anyone else in this park because they've lived life already. So yeah, we, we, we've lost that as a, as American culture. We don't have that. We live in bigger homes with smaller families. It's devastating. Yeah. I mean, it, there's definitely a um, disconnect. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I saw a TikTok today. Um, it, it was maybe two likes on it, like one of those TikToks. And I, I really took a moment. It was a side by side photo. It was a little girl and her grandfather. And it had like the text over it. It was from some show about like, will I ever see you again? Maybe one day like this isn't just goodbye. Two likes on it. No comments. I commented on it. Oh, fuck. Where was I going with this? Okay, I got it back. Um, in her description, she said, I just wish I had one more day with my grandfather. I couldn't imagine having somebody like that in my life. Yeah. I'm not close to anybody in my family. I have my sister. And now I'm reconnecting with an aunt. Like, I never had a grandmother experience. Never had the grandfather experience. Never had the dad experience. Never had that one-on-one -on -one nurturing mother experience. I never had the big family. I can go to my aunt with this and I can talk to my uncle about that. Like, right. We don't have that anymore as a culture that's going right. away. I'm devastated. Yeah. Heartbroken. And that's just the new normal. Right. 
Do you know why that's the new normal? Because people treat people like shit. Yeah. And that love and loyalty and respect is no longer there. Mm -hmm. People expect because you have a, a bond, a blood bond with somebody that you're supposed to just cater to their fucking bullshit. Right. And as a society, we're like, no, we're not catering to that. You're going to treat me with the same respect that I treat you or I'm going to write you the fuck off. Yeah. And that's actually, in my opinion, the right answer. Mm -hmm. I want people of quality in my life. And if you're not going to treat me with quality, I don't want you here. I can't do superficial relationships. Right. But there used to be love that was involved. And like there was, I mean, there's always going to be family gossip. That's right. normal. You know, you want people to be in the know of what's going on in each other's lives in case support is needed or whatever. But like mm -hmm. there's a difference between, you know, did you hear what so-and-so said versus, oh, you know, she just lost her job. She right. might be calling you for some money. Like, just be prepared. Hey, could you think we can get a community pot going and bring them dinner? Like, that shit doesn't exist anymore. Right. It used to be um, a husband would pass away. 40 families would stop by with food. Yep. So the wife wouldn't want to have to worry about cooking for the next three yep. months. Like, she grieve. Yep. That's not a thing anymore. I was a single mom for a while. And, like, I had split custody with dad. So I would have my kids for one week and they would go away for one week. The week that I had the children, my life would fucking fall apart. I am one person doing the job of a village. Yep. You know that that's why they bring dishes for people when they move in. Like that that custom of bringing somebody a new dish. Like, hey, neighbor. Yeah. And bringing them food. is so that while they're moving in and unpacking and getting their life together, they don't have to worry about how, how they're going to cook. Like it gives them time to mm -hmm. establish the home. It's the same process. That, that yeah. was actually the custom for that. You want to wrap this up and we can record the interview, the intros and shit? Yeah, I'm hungry. I All want right. dinner. Um, I hope you guys got value from this two-part series, um, two-part email, how do you, uh, whatever you would like to call that, this back-to-back -back recording of shenanigans. Sorry that this, there was no intro to this one the way that there was on the last one, but we're doing what we can. Yeah. So with that being said, guys, um, remember that you are the author of your own life. So grab a pen. And we will see you on the next one. Bye, guys.